you're tuned in to Repco Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Proudly brought to you by Repco, in association with Mount Shop, Maguire's and Rizlo. This week, Garden City Rodders hits 50 and we chase down the Uga Boys. And we shed raid one sweet West Auckland collection belonging to Chris Hornblow. But first, thanks to our mates at Maguire's, meet Martin and his low-going 57 Fairlane. A story that started way back in Marty's mid-teens when he and a mate got their impressionable hands on an early hot rod magazine. I can still remember reading it and wowing over it, and I subscribed to it not long after. But we sort of were down the road of English cars, PA Vauxhalls and Mark III Zephyrs. But it was about when I was 18 that I got introduced to Ford Custom Lines, and that was it. I was hooked. I've always been interested in hot rods, tea buckets, all that sort of thing. But the custom cars are the one that I like. They're sort of smooth and cruisy and relaxed. Not under big noises. It's a 1957 Ford Fairlane, uh, 500 Victoria, two-door hardtop. If you want to know, it's a 63A. This is the two-door pillarless model. They made a four-door pillarless model. They made a two-door pillar model. And in New Zealand, we mainly just got the four-door custom line, custom 300. I had a, a Ford book, The History of Ford, and I saw a two-door pillarless one in there. I thought, wow, I didn't know they even made those. I liked the chrome and I liked the pillarless thing. When I got the thing into the country, it had a lot of rust in it. So I decided to get it panel beaded. Then I decided I wanted to lower it. Progress from there for better or for worse, yeah. And when Marty said he wanted to lower it, well, he wasn't kidding. Took it out to a crowd in Lower Hutt and they took the springs out, told me to come in and have a look. It was sitting really low to the ground and I really liked it. I always liked mild customs. Not over the top stuff, just gentle. Said, well, we'll put some air suspension in it and I really want the motor to be compact in the engine bay, so I want the inner guards to be closed in. I want all the firewall to be smoothed off and I was quite interested in Frenching the front headlights. And then as we did those things, it sort of progressed even further. <laughs> that progression wouldn't slow once the car came home. While the Fairlane sits fair and square in the mild custom cap, the term mild is a bit of an understatement too. The bumpers have been smoothed and cut and shut tight to the body. The rear one is now home to a couple of exhaust tips. Door and trunk handles were promptly done away with, while the rear tail lights were extended and modified with Cadillac bullets. French LED headlights feature up front, joined by unique treatment of the indicators all round. Even the 57 swage lines have been subtly sharpened, while the tried and true customizer's trick of pinching the caps from a 57 Lincoln Premier is in play, accentuated by custom spun bullets and era correct wide whites. The cabin is no less modified. There's the obvious stuff like the late model Nissan steering column, custom center console, and a full retrim making use of Ford laser seats. Spend some time and you'll find a Dakota digital instrument cluster and plenty of creature comforts like the custom sound system, electric windows, and aftermarket aircon. It's a cohesive package that when coated in its 50 style mint and white two-tone hides just how much engineering this Fairlane has going on. It's certainly not one for the purists. No, it was built for me. It's how I like it. I've had comments where are the skirts? You've got to have skirts. Well, I've got skirts, but I didn't actually think they all looked that good. You've destroyed the tail lights. Why have you cadillacarized it? I said, well, I actually quite like those. Ah, why have you brought the exhaust through the bumper? Well, it keeps them off the ground and they, they look cool. So I haven't pleased everyone, but I haven't been trying to please everyone. I just, it's just me. It's what I built. I built it myself as it were, and I love it. It's great to drive. Thirsty, but it's great to drive. The Department of Thirst is not just there for looks. The 408 Cube Windsor is the work of Robin Silk of Otaihanga Speed Shop. And clearly, Marty likes to drive his car. A Tremec 5-speed shifts gears. Car came out factory with a four-barrel 312 cubic inch, and it's two-speed, nominally two-speed, but at a low gear, automatic. So I always liked the Windsor motor, small block Ford. But then I decided I'd stroke it, so I built a second motor 
and that's what's in there now. So I quite like the manual. Perhaps in hindsight, an automatic might have been a bit easier to drive and perhaps less problems. If I was doing it again, maybe I'd consider an automatic. But no, I quite like the manual. Starting on a hill is a bit of a trick, that's all. Builds at this level are seldom smooth sailing, and the 57's 19-year marathon makes no exception. A project with plenty of downs to go with the ups, but Marty and his crew have overcome them all in creating this truly one-off, mild custom fair lane. And most of those hours have been logged at home in Marty's garage. I never lost track in my mind of the finished product. Because it's a long, long process, the overall car, as I would see it finished, was what kept me going because there were a few times I pretty much wanted to quit. <laughs> but I hung in there. To get it going the first time was a huge thrill, and now it's sort of mellowed a wee bit. It's, it's there, I can get in, I can turn the key, I can drive it. It's great, it's a great achievement, I feel. I'm real pleased I managed to do it. I could thank everyone by name that's helped me, but the danger in naming someone is you've forgotten someone else who may have had an equal part, if not more, but that's just an old age memory block thing more than anything. So I would thank everyone, and they know who they are, from the person that did half an hour of tricky welding to the person who helped me fit the tyres. I'd like to say a big thank you. It's been much appreciated. Right, thanks to our mates at Mount Shop, we're shed raiding the West Auckland collection of Chris Hornblow. The old hot rod bug bit early and seems Chris never stood much of a chance. I don't really know. I just liked cars. My father was a mechanic, wouldn't work on my cars. He would tell me, how to go about it and then it disappear. I've never waned away from it and I like all the sorts of cars, whether it's from an old stocker, which I never thought I would be, to so street machines, muscle cars. It's got to look right, yeah, sit right, wheels. Doesn't have to have the flashy paint, but in some cases, yep, yeah, some not. And they're the easy ones because you don't have to clean them. You can drive them, you're not sweating it when you park them. They're all to be driven, sometimes harder than others. Yes, it seems there's a car for every occasion in Chris's barn-style shed, and many of them have been part of the family for a long time. My old Chevy truck, 78 truck, 34 years I've had that. Used to drive it every day. A Camaro, 32 years. Probably my least driven car, even though I really like it. The 56, that gets driven a lot. Some of those cars have been in and out of the South Island regularly. Some go to the racetrack. Yeah, they're not just to be looked at. There's no one mark bias going on here, but it's clear that Chris likes his Chevys later and his Fords early in both year and how they're hopped up. You won't find an independent front shoehorned under any of Chris's hot rods. I know I just like those old cars. They're not good on the body these days, but I still like them. The Model A with the 409, driving from Twizel to Auckland, that tested my body. Yeah, it's noisy, it's hot, and it's hungry, but it's just cool. And they're different. Not everyone has one. Yep, they don't get much more raw and ready than the Hammered A Coupe. Street driven, but a regular at the strip, and will be even more so now again that Chris has parted ways with his 56 gasser. I'd already had a coupe built for hot rod shows, shiny, but I liked Dave Best's car a lot. He wouldn't sell it, so I thought I'll, I'll build one, but it couldn't be the same. And I talked to Squeak Bell at a Rotorua swap meet. He had one photo of a car in Portland, Oregon, and that's the car. I bought it got another Kiwi Dwayne Jones to pick it up. It wasn't meant to be like a drag car. It's a street rod, but it's got that race car vibe to it. The coupe clocks mid-11s thanks to over 400 horses at the wheels from the Chevy 409. The Model A is now also a little more aerodynamic than Henry Ford suggested thanks to the efforts of Tauranga's John Key. I wanted four inches. He was having me on at six inches. So we agreed on five inches. I wanted louvers, like the hood's fully louvered. There's a few bullet holes in it, so we left the bullet holes. John Key would also play a role with the Camaro. 
It was on a stateside trip 32 years back with John that Chris would pick up the RSSS 396 Cube four-speed coupe. One of just a couple thousand built, it's the fourth Camaro Chris has owned and a case of rectifying seller's regret. These days, it finds itself in plenty of good company. The bug clearly has a strong hold and like it was passed down from his father, Chris in turn has shared that passion for old school iron with his own family. Yep, my son's into it, right into it. Some of my grandchildren, good to see. And they've got some damn cool cars. Old people are dying. So you need the young people to keep it going, otherwise it's not gonna happen. And, and we are getting all older. You need the, you know, the people to be involved for it to keep going, don't you? Chris's dream shed might look done to most of us, but apparently there's always space for one more suitable candidate. Or two. We'll see. <laughs> it's not easy to get through the system these days, but um, yeah, I think there's one or two left to go. Maybe a cruiser, big old cruiser. Yeah, another hot rod maybe. We'll see. Parts of it are here. protection of hybrid ceramic. Whoa. Now in three easy to use products. In original spray wax, now as a liquid wax, and a spray detailer. Meguiar's hybrid ceramic family with advanced SiO2 technology. Meguiar's ceramic made easy. Rislo has been in engines almost as long as engines have been in cars. Why? Because from then until now, there's never been a perfectly clean fuel. This means every time you fill up, you're adding pollutants and contaminants to your fuel system. Rislo Fuel Injector Cleaner can cure those woes and help save your engine. Rislo Fuel Injector Cleaner adds an upper cylinder lubricant, providing double the cleaning power out of the same bottle. We know something about aging well, so when we say it's your engine's fountain of youth under a screw top, you can count on it. Rislo is the original engine tune-up, available at participating stores near you. You're back with Repco Muscle Garage. Clubs are the lifeblood of our hobby, and this week, thanks to Rislo, we catch up with two of them, starting with one that's just hit the big 5-0, Canterbury's Garden City Rodders. Basically, a bunch of guys that got together about 1971. The main interest is American cars, of origin and interest, and it's remained that way all the way through. This is what we do. This is what, you know, this is why we build these cars. Some of these guys that are here in this club here have been here since day dot, and they're still standing strong. If you want to know anything, they're, they're, they're more than welcome. They've got a lot of knowledge. Engines, to gearboxes, to diffs, to, you know, getting a VIN for your car and how to go about it. You have the support of all the others, source parts, bounce off ideas. You need to stick together as a club. Garden City Rodders was first formed in 1970 and became affiliated to the New Zealand Hot Rod Association in 71. It's currently one of 13 NZHRA clubs in the wider Canterbury region. 2021 marks a major milestone for Garden City Rodders as they celebrate their 50th anniversary. An impressive achievement for an active club which has maintained pretty constant membership numbers over the decades. A lot of the guys, their children are starting to come through the ranks now and, you know, over the last 20 years, I've pretty much watched them come from toddlers to car owners. It's, it's brilliant. It's definitely the camaraderie that, that keeps it all together. To me, a hot rod club is, is as much a social thing as it is a, a car thing. It's a combination of both. Cars are about fun. They're not about, to me, they're not about sitting in the garage and just being looked at. They're actually to be used, and that's what the guys do. And the girls, sorry. Yeah, girls as well. We've got a little bit of everything, a little bit of modern, a little bit of really old school. And then we've got the uh, home builds, as you can see there. The standards of the cars in this club are, are very, very high. Together, probably 315 odd cars. Of those, there's only probably about 60 that are going and roadworthy, as you know, as, as with the hobby. Of those road going examples, you'll recognise a few from previous episodes. In fact, the club boasts plenty within its ranks that wouldn't look out of their league on a magazine cover, but it's the variety that keeps life interesting. 
you do have other people's opinions. You know, your opinion may be different to somebody else's. And they like Fords, they like Chevs, they like rat rods, they like coupes, they like roadsters. But hey, we all love cars. So, and I don't care what what you drive. It's all part and parcel with the deal, isn't it? Everyone's got their own opinions. Everyone sort of admires what you've the effort that you put in, probably more than anything. You know, and support you, which is a good thing. It'd be really boring if we all had the same cars and there'd be lots of arguments, but no, it's really good. It's a good mixture of people and cars and attitudes to things. As a hobby, we need to be together and support our hobby as a whole, working with government, make sure there's no legislation coming through that we're going to miss out on and, or stifle our hobby. So our numbers together need to be important. And that means keeping an eye to the future, a concept not lost on this line. We, we try to promote the younger generation into the ethics of being a hot rider. You know, they build awesome cars. I think they, there's a variety of them that have a tendency to ruin that for them, and um, they all get put into that class. And it's something that we have to look at because the, the, the generation of people, we're not getting any younger. So the younger generation have to follow us along or we'll become antiques. We grew up with these cars, and what's encouraging is when you see, you know, young guys getting into the old muscle cars and the old hot rods. To, to see them, you know, with, with the passion for the old American um, cars is, is, is really encouraging. Some of those older guys have got a hell of a lot more knowledge than what you, um, than what you think. Oh, if you do this and you do that and give this a go and give that a go, and you think, oh, yeah, well, I've never thought of that, you know, and that kind of knowledge, that's priceless knowledge. You know, I'd, I really admire them for that, it's great. And I hope to be one of them guys one day too, you know. The good thing I, I like about the club is nobody asks what you do for a job really, unless you volunteer it. You're just another car enthusiast, or another hot rod enthusiast, and that's really neat. Just the way it should be. Right, from the south to the north now, while a few decades newer on the scene when compared to their southern counterparts, West Auckland's Ugar Rodders haven't wasted any time stamping their own style on the hot rodding landscape. Well, Ugar Rodders, or Ugar Boys as we started, is just a NZHRA affiliated hot rod association club. Started with 15 members and it's grown from there over the years, basically. We like a club that enjoy, enjoy ourselves, have a good time, try not to take too, too much too seriously. Where we go, you've got to put a bit of a smile on everyone's faces, uh, I hope, anyway. Got our Ugar horns happening, because everybody always asks um, what Ugar is all about, but it's just their car's got to have a Ugar horn, you know? It's from one extreme to another. We've got factory V8 Aussie cars through to, obviously, heavy modified hot rods, through to cruisers, through parlours. It's a very wide range, and there's no real Pacific criteria of what you have to come into the club. And people-wise, there's a few uh, interesting characters in the group, I would say. Nah, it's more the people, definitely the people. Because of the cars, they'll come maybe, join join the club, and then you get to know personally, and then the cars just become secondary. We don't really hear about the car, it's all about the people. And the kids, you know, we've got kids too, so some of ours have grown up already. People need a reason to come together some time away from work, it's time away from life really. You can be a bit carefree when you're out going for a drive in your hot rod. I think it gives people a chance to escape and enjoy life for a bit. And while the cars may just be the excuse to bring people together, Ugar's lineup of excuses makes for a pretty impressive sight. We're not just, um, uh, just a one car kind of a club or one make. We'll have anything basically that's pretty cool. We're into that. Your Fords and your Chevs and your Holdens and your Mopars and that, but in general, it's all just jest. We all just have each other on. I don't think anyone really is so staunch that they just they sit and they sit and nothing else around. So yeah, it's, it's good having a bit of a laugh with each other. We try to keep our club a little bit low key. I mean, there is obviously protocol that we have to go through being NZHRA affiliated and we're in what they call Zone 2 in New Zealand, which is the Auckland Zone, and there's quite a few clubs. It's the biggest zone in, in New Zealand. 
A lot of us are uh, automotive based work wise, so these guys with workshops, guys that import cars, cars and parts from the states, and, and we all try and help each other out. And it, if someone's doing a car and needs a hand, we all go around and help and stuff like that. So it does help over the years of keeping people interested and stuff. A lot of guys have got projects and they stop and we try and keep them going on them. And... Fast closing in on 20 years and with the next generation of rodders waiting in the wings, you're not likely to see this West Auckland Hot Rod Club dragged down talking politics. They'll be on the road, a bunch brought together by a hobby they enthusiastically promote and support. We don't want to just seem like a whole bunch of, bunch of um, well, years ago we were young hoons, now we're just old hoons. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, definitely uh, promoting the sport and it's good to see it's appreciated, I think. You all right, need some love? We've got you sorted. Thanks to our mates at Maguire's, we have this massive complete car care pack worth over $760 to give away. Plus, a $500 mount shop voucher to keep the underside ship shape too. And to top it off, one year subscription to NZ V8 magazine. To enter, simply head to themotorhood.com and hit the Repco Muscle Garage link. The winner will be drawn at the end of the series. Easy. During this year's Repco Supercars Championship season, the Garage is your go-to place for all things supercars and motoring. Exclusive content, special guests, and your chance to win amazing experiences at the track. Register your interest today. Repco Muscle Garage was proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Mount Shop, undercar specialists. Maguires, people who love cars love Maguires and Rislo, high performance additives for high performance vehicles.